So this week I've got something pretty interesting in using layer masks and filters in very creative ways to get very interesting design layout. And what we're going to be using is this image here of this model. And I've, it's got a great composition right here, as you can see. It's uh, kind of offset to the side a little bit and looks pretty good. We're going to add some interest to it by applying a layer mask as well as some filters. Now we're going to generate the layer mask from another image. In fact, I've already got the image open here. And it's just uh, this abstract kind of swirl effect here. And I thought it looked really good. And this is uh, something you really should do when you're looking at textures like this and think about them in very different ways and how you can apply them, not just as, you know, by blending it for through a blend mode or something like that, but being able to generate a layer mask from an image can give you some pretty interesting results. So what we're gonna do with this image is go ahead and take it and drag and drop it over. And once we're inside here, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and place this roughly where I want it to be in the composition. Now, just so I can see what's going on, I'm gonna press the letter five on my keyboard and that's gonna drop the opacity of that layer to 50%. So I'm gonna go put it in free transform and just go over here and rotate this and I can see where the graphic is being placed roughly right there and I'm gonna go ahead and scale it up. It is a uh, an abstract element so I can uh, freely scale that and do whatever with it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and scale this up a little bit here. So I'm paying attention to where the light streaks are falling in relation to the position of the woman's face here in the layout. So I want to get it as much as possible over the central area of her face here. And once you have that, I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to go ahead and bring the opacity of that layer back up to 100. Now at this point, you can see, I'm going to go ahead and scale that down a little bit more. You can see that uh, some area off to the side here is being visible, and that's because of uh, the positioning we placed this uh, graphic. So I'm just going to use the gradient tool and come in here and grab the foreground to transparent. With black set as my foreground color on that layer containing the graphic, we're just going to go over here and just apply a gradient. Let's actually do it a linear gradient. We'll just add that over there. There we go. So now there's the overall image. Now, what I want to do is the graphic is in position. Now I want to generate a selection based on the luminosity of what we're looking at right now. And in order to do that, we'll simply go into the channels palette. Inside of here, I'm just gonna hold down the command key, control on Windows, and click directly on the RGB channel right here. And it's gonna load the overall luminosity as a selection. Then we'll go back to layers and over here on the layer that contains the graphic, you're going to go and turn off the vis visibility of that for the moment and notice the selection is still active. Back here on the layer containing the model, we're going to go ahead and click and add a layer mask based on that active selection. You can see over here, if I drag the layers panel out, you can see that the layer mask looks exactly like our graphic. In fact, if I option click on it, you can see that there is the layer mask there and we can see the white areas where it's visible is showing the image through. Now at this point, this is actually not bad. This looks pretty good. It's giving me an interesting result by just barely showing the girl through that mask. And you can almost stop here or tweak that. But we're gonna take it one more step further by applying a filter directly to this layer mask. You'll notice we are still selected on the layer masks. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the filter menu, go down here to pixelate and choose Meza. No, I'm sorry. That's the wrong one. I use Mezzotint a lot, so. Actually, we're, we're going to be using this one here called Mosaic. So we'll go ahead and uh, choose that. And inside here in the cell size, I'm going to set it to around 40. And you can already see it's turning it into a bunch of blocks in there. It looks really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 40. Feel free to go ahead and experiment with larger or smaller size blocks, depending on the type of effect you're going for here. But in this case, 40 seems to work pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, the problem is you might look at this and think, well, it's not that visible. She's not really coming through as much. And that's what you need to do is make it a levels adjustment in, on that layer mask itself. Notice we are still on the layer mask, haven't done anything to the original image. So with the layer mask still active, we're gonna go under image, adjustments, levels. And it's the white area, the lighter area, we actually want, want to make brighter in this case to bring the image out a little bit more. So we'll take the white slider here inside the levels um, window, push it in and notice the image becomes more clear the closer we push it in there. And notice it's revealing a very interesting effect. It's kind of fading out on the size of those blocks there. And you can vary this just by moving that slider back and forth. Very, very cool effect. So I'll go ahead and click OK, and now our effect looks pretty good. 
What you can do now at this point is if you don't like the positioning of your subject or the layer mask, you can go in here in the layers panel and unlink the layer to the layer mask. Just click on this little chain link icon in between the uh, um, previews. And now each one is independent of the other. If I select on the layer itself, I can move the image around, you'll notice, and the layer mask doesn't move at all. So I can reposition that. I can reposition the mask over a little bit to the side. And then I can add my final text element, like as if, as if it were a complete design or something. Now here's an added little bonus to this, since we are talking about mosaics and very cool effects like that. On that layer that contains the text, notice right here, I'm gonna go ahead and make that a smart object. And then I'm gonna go over here and run a, the same mosaic filter we applied. We'll go to pixelate, mosaic. And this time I'm actually gonna do a 10 square cell size there. And you can see it's applying the mosaic to that text and I'll click OK. Inside the layers panel, you'll notice we have the layer of the smart object. Beneath that, we have the smart filter because it's a smart object It applied it as a smart filter. And we have a layer mask for the filter. It's not for the layer itself, but for the filter that's been applied. So if we grab that gradient tool using the same foreground to transparent with black as the foreground, we'll start right here in the middle of the text and just drag over, you can see it will fade that mosaic effect and it's just kind of fading in toward the backup here, kind of adding a more logo element to the name, mosaic design, and then the overall layout looks really nice, ultimately using those filters and layer masks to achieve a very interesting effect.